All right, there's an awful lot of information about the QSC K.2 series out there. And a lot of it involves people saying how the power was doubled. Of course, it was not. The originals were 1,000 watts continuous. The K.2 series are advertised as 2,000 watts peak. There's a difference. I'm not going to get into that because I think a lot of people have already figured that out. But that does annoy me when I continue to see and read and hear things about people saying that the power was doubled. Are the new K.2 series louder and better than the legacy K12s? Well, most people will easily tell you yes, they are, because of the advanced headroom and other factors. I've now used them for a year, and although I think like a lot of us, I kind of miss the deep function that you used to have on the K12s, I've learned to live without it just fine, and here's why. Okay, so the K12.2 has been in my arsenal for just over a year and has done about 40 events, 35 weddings, one house party, and I believe four corporate events. So I think almost exactly 40 events. And in that time, it has never had to go at full, full volume, but it certainly gets very, very loud. I know with the Legacy K series, and I used the K12s personally in my own setup, as well as the K8s and K10s at other various events. Um, the K10s, I think, being kind of the secret arsenal of the Legacy series. And when you would push them really, really hard, all the way to max volume, they would kind of start to fall apart a little bit. Now, I understand that most speakers are going to do that, but I just kind of felt like the louder and louder you made them, there was just a little bit of harshness that would come out. I don't see that as much with these. And I understand I just said that I haven't pushed these to their max, max, max volume, but we've pushed them pretty far, and they've gotten pretty loud. And I feel like that the improved headroom is definitely there. I know that the amplifiers are pushing more to the bottom now than to the top. It's not even where it was 500 watts continuous, 500 watts continuous on the old one. Now they use their peak numbers and they say 1800 watts peak low, 225 watts peak high. Um, I do feel like you notice the difference as you start to turn the speaker up. When we're making it louder at certain events, it just seems like it's holding up better to higher volumes and staying with a really tight, good sound, especially just for a two-way cabinet. Remember, these aren't wood enclosures. They're not three-way enclosures. It's just a two-way ABS plastic enclosure that sounds really good, even at high SPLs, much better than the Legacy Series did. Of course, with the new mesh behind the 18-gauge steel grill, you have a little bit more protection from the elements, whether that be dust or a little bit of rain. Um, of course, with the Legacy Series, you could see all the components in direct sunlight like this. Here we are, bright as can be, and you really can't see much past that mesh, and it certainly does not affect your sound at all. A fairly frequent complaint I've seen about these speakers is their boot-up time. People are not happy with the amount of time it takes for it to boot up. Let's take a look at that live. Click. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight seconds to get it going. Not a deal breaker for me, but I do get that it takes a little time for all that DSP to do its little system checks and make sure that it's ready to run properly. So of course there's a million videos out there that talk about the menu itself and all the features and stuff in there. The point of these videos is to basically tell you from experience what I've noticed at events. And even though this speaker's only been in the arsenal for a year, we have done, you know, about 40 events with it, so there has been some quirks and things that I've noticed with it. Number one, I do like that, just like they did at the end of the other uh, Legacy series, they do have the locking connectors. Of course, you would expect that at this point in a speaker of this range. Yes, absolutely. We have used the iPod input a couple of times over here. Works quite well. Gain C. So I tend to run the speakers just at Unity. Haven't noticed really any problems or any need to push it. Maybe a click or two past that occasionally, but nothing really outstandingly spectacular there. DSP presets. I do a lot of weddings with this speaker, a lot of corporate events. I tend to run it in live because I feel like it gives you a little bit more than default does. Live bright, I find to be a little bit harsh. Again, a lot of this is just gonna be my opinion. 
I think it's a little bit harsh sometimes. I love running them in live. Sometimes for certain receptions, yes, I'll throw them in dance. I'm often always using the subwoofer with it anyways. But even still, I feel like with the dance DSP, sometimes it's a little bit too much for wedding ceremonies. Um, I feel like it makes it sound a little more boomy than it needs to, and you lose a little bit of your vocal range um, on kind of some of your older 70s and 80s hits that so often do tend to make their appearance at wedding receptions. Um, you can, of course, if you've seen videos on this, you know you can use these as monitors. One of these is for use with a microphone. I believe monitor, stage monitor one is if you're using it uh, with a mic, and monitor two is like for drum kits if you're using it without. Um, if you want to have a guitar on channel A and a vocalist on channel B, you'd set that preset eight, uh, for a guitar and vocals. You can use it as a bass amp. I use hand mic a lot during um, speeches. It does help to kind of eliminate some of those frequencies that you can sometimes have be a problem. Head mic, if you've got these used in maybe like a church sanctuary or some place that you're using head microphones. And it even has a response rate for being a studio monitor. Now, I'm sorry, that is one heck of a studio monitor to use a K12 series for that, but you can. They do have the DSP in there. Um, going to the back, most recently used this with a no sub um, at a smaller gathering. Does give you some options in there for your crossover. Delay, I haven't had to use yet because we're not employing a whole bunch of these in a system, but the fact that it's there is pretty awesome. I haven't messed with the EQ yet either too much because I haven't felt the need to, but again, it's something that you have the ability to do, which is really cool if you want to start to really tinker with your sound. I think there are some people out there that have messed with the EQ settings and gotten this thing to really scream out some incredible volumes. So feel free to toy around with that. I haven't had to use it much, to be honest with you. I wish I could tell you that I did and there was some secret amazing EQ setting in there. I just haven't used it. I haven't felt that we've needed to. I use uh, MG12XU Yamaha mixer. Sometimes we do a tiny bit of EQing on there. Um, but really we've just been running them with the standard DSP and it's been outstanding. In the settings is where you'll find things like the LED on the front of the speaker. Um, you can turn it off, which as you can see, I have it on rear only. The reason I do that is because at wedding receptions, as the evening goes along, and I have these speakers sometimes behind a bride or a groom, or where you can maybe see them in the background of a first dance, I don't like that bright blue light showing up in photos or being distracting in any way. So I just tend to turn it off. I don't need it on. I don't need to show people that I've got some cool speaker with a blue light on the front of it. I don't care. So I tend to turn that off all the time, um, just a personal preference. Used the speakers last year out here in California in the summertime up to 100 degrees on multiple days. Zero issues, even in direct sunlight, of overheating problems or anything. So really well made, really good job with the cooling system, uh, QSC. No issues at all, even in some pretty hot conditions. And of course, the covers I purchased for my Legacy K12s fit on the K.2 series just fine. Um, we use these not only to transport, but if you're ever in a pinch and it starts to rain, you can toss these covers on and they will do a good job protecting from the rain. Can't film with a train going by. So the K12.2s provide plenty of sound, plenty of headroom, and really great clarity, especially for a two-way system. Excellent for mobile events, including weddings, corporate parties, and the reliability is more than likely going to be awesome, just like the Legacy series and just about anything that QSC has ever made. So nothing really bad to say about them. I don't miss the deep function as much as I thought that I would. And there's a lot of advanced features on there, some of which I'm not even using. K12.2s all the way. Check out these videos over here and subscribe over there. Till next time.